Did you guys see Fantano gave uh, Chapel Roan a 10? It's true! It's true! Kind of. Not really. What band is this? That's a good question. I actually don't know the answer, so I need to call up an expert real quick, you guys. I gotta call in an expert. What's up, William? Hey. Actually, so good to hear from you. It's been way too long. How you been? I've been all right. You know, working on mashups, music of various, you know. Yeah. I heard your, um, the Imagine Dragons Nickelback album, and I actually really loved it. So, you know. Oh, oh thank you. There he is. Ah, oh, man, look at him. What's up? Like, I had so much fun with that project, actually. And I, I think that it's, like, worth mentioning to people, like, are wondering, oh, what, you know, what's what's he doing here? William Morancy is someone who I feel like actually provides a really valuable perspective on this band. Um, I feel like he's someone who's a lot more lenient and positive than I am and can oftentimes kind of see good in things and see potential in things. Dude, the, the Nine Inch Nails mashup with Nickelback was insane. Like, thank you. that actually, for me, hearing that shit was like, oh yeah, no, he, he gets it, you know? Like, he sees the magic. This is a man who sees the full picture, so... In fact, I'm going to play it for them. They they need to hear. The people need to hear. Can't wait for every song on the sound to appear in every Ford commercial. Have, have you heard this album yet? Uh, Loom? Yeah. I just listened to it like two hours ago, but I've only okay. listened to it once because I'm Perfect. making a video where I like react to every Imagine Dragons album and give my thoughts. Oh, perfect. Um, Kind of inspired by a stream that I think we did like a few years ago. Yes. Where we were. Yeah. And I lost the footage to it and it actually kills me because that's uh, when I was streaming on Twitch. So yeah, I was not like, I didn't have everything cataloged back then. But uh, me and William, we listened to every Imagine Dragons album, which yeah. honestly, we could probably end up doing it again. And I don't think anyone would remember or care <laughs> if you're down. Like right. if you're okay, sure. like I, I think people would love that shit. So if you uh, have time, and you want to do that. I'd love that. But uh, yeah, you've been working on mashups and uh, you know, how, how's other stuff in life going? You've been uh, traveling at all, you know? I'm uh, just mostly traveling around Massachusetts, like on trains and buses and stuff. Um, like sightseeing and stuff? Yeah, or just, you know, hiking, uh, looking for blueberries or, you know, mushrooms or anything. Yeah. Dude, that's so cool. Are there like uh, good trails in Massachusetts and whatnot? Yeah. In New York, they have like a lot of stuff, like uh, trails where you could pick like raspberries and stuff. So. Oh, no way. Nice. Yeah, I know that, like that, that feeling, it kind of like taps you back into this uh human part of yourself it's kind of beautiful so it's actually so awesome to hear you do that uh Skriegel is sending in lots of shit emojis <laughs> god damn it oh yeah yeah i was gonna show him uh this which is truly an abomination just kind of cried i like your pants around your feet and i like the way you still say please while you <laughs> it's a gnarly disgusting combination but again i think that it's like i really believe that only you would be able to like hear and assemble some shit like this and i love that so what are your first uh, thoughts and impressions on loom so far um based on my listen I thought it was like sonically and like production wise their most cohesive album. Um, whether it's their best, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but um, so far I think Smoke and Mirrors might be slightly better based on everything that I've heard throughout their discography. But I don't know. I mean, they have the same people working on production for every song. And, like, some of their albums, they'd have, like, Alex DeKid on, like, you know, a few songs, and then they would be doing, like, you know, a few other songs, and then, uh, I don't know, like, the guy who worked on, what is it, Pure Heroin by Lord might be on a few other songs. Yeah. So yeah. it was just, like, very all over the place, and you kind of feel that it was very different between songs. Right. Absolutely, yeah. So this one, it's, like, what, is it all one person working on it, or is it just, like, cleaner like uh transitions and stuff 
It's like the same production team, I think, for every song. Production-wise, it's like super consistent. Kind of in the vein of like, uh, you know, like Sharks or Bones or Enemy, stuff like that. Yeah, the songs. Uh... Yeah. So were you a fan of their last project that they did? The, um, I forgot what it, Mercury, Volume uh, 1 and 2. So I know that you gave Mercury Act 1 a pretty scathing review. Um, I actually, I think I might actually prefer it over Act 2 just because, like, there are some really interesting and sort of unexpected tracks like My Life and... I do like Cutthroat and Dull Knives just because, like, I don't know. There's just something sort of unhinged about them that, like, I can't help but appreciate at least a little bit. No, I totally, I like, I understand. And, like, yeah. I mean, looking back on a lot of reviews I've done, I've probably just been, like, very instant to just, like, shut stuff down. I'm not even sure yeah. I'd, like, fully say, oh, it's the worst thing ever. Because, like, yeah, it's different. It's interesting at least, right? Like, and I imagine, like, and I imagine, I imagine that, um, with you going through, like, their whole discography, seeing them at least try something a little bit different like that was probably exciting, right? Yes. So, would you say Loom is, like, a massive change for them, or is it just kind of more of the same? There isn't anything, like, as sort of unhinged as, like, Dull Knives or, like, the screaming part on Giants. I think it it sounds more like Bones or Sharks from Mercury Act 2. Some of the, like, production, it was, like, and, like, instrumentals were not, like, things that I had heard Imagine Dragons do before. Um, so, in other words, it's kind of probably not going to be, like, you know, that boundary pushing, but hopefully, with what I'm expecting from how you're describing it, it's going to be just sort of a solid listen, like a like a decent enough new set of tracks. From Imagine Dragons. It's also like, I think like 30 minutes or so. Which yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Only 30 minutes, so. It might it might be their shortest album. I'm not sure. I, I think in that way, it has to be, consi it's probably one of their most consistent albums. All right, yeah. Um, I appreciate some of the background. I'm going to show people that, uh, a lot of people are saying that it's actually a very consistently ass album. That's uh, the overall Excellent. consensus. But that being said, I mean, let's be honest. How many people actually went into this looking to, you know, give it a shot? And how many people actually just went in to be like, okay, let's shit on the new Imagine Dragons. So, you know, this was to be expected, honestly. So I'm not too shocked by this. And I'm going to try to get something out of it. Again, uh, Imagine Dragons do have something magical uh, that they're able right. to bring to the table when they do it correctly when they are able to sort of line everything up. So I'm hoping that some of that magic rubs off here. And uh, yeah, the 10th song is just a bonus track. The actual album length is 28 minutes. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, look at that. Uh, first song, Wake Up. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Eminem type beat? A little bit, yeah. So. I Yeah, I definitely hear like, uh, sort of like the without me type of thing, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's going to be uh, kind of tough for people to adjust to many of the aspects here that aren't directly rock, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but I'm actually, I'm open to it. Uh, if, if they are able to have these, you know, electronic blends that actually do work and they are able to make something creative out of it, then I think that, you know, I'm willing to give them a chance to show it, you know? Oh, I just saw Wizards of Waverly Place mentioned the theme song to that. No, I totally hear that too. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit weird, but you know, I'm I'm curious at least to see where it goes. So. What a wild intro! Um, right. That was, it, it has a lot of character to it. Like, even the moments where I'm like, like the dig in and in and in. Like, it's <laughs> odd, but like, it does stand out, I will say, you know? Yeah. 
Um, I feel like there are a lot of sounds being blended here and a lot of styles, but I actually am just kind of having fun with it, you know? Yeah. Like, um, it, it just feels like they're trying something a little bit different. Like, it, I don't think it's that safe. I actually think that the combination here is actually quite wild. If you, so, you know, when listening to this, are there any songs that you could imagine this, like, if you switch something out, would, like, be able to combine with? Like, in terms of a mashup? Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, Without Me is maybe an answer. Um, uh, maybe something by, like, Uncle Adams. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, there was like a... It reminded me of something else yeah. I've heard. Like, you said, like, Without Me. I, like, I feel like that's kind of like that. Oh. Perfect. Oh, yeah? Talk Dirty by uh, Jason Derulo. <laughs> You know the words to my songs. No other English. I definitely yeah. could see that. That would be perfect, actually. So um, yeah, I uh, this is this is a fun enough intro. I'm not offended by it. Um, certainly baffled yeah. by it, but not offended. So uh, excited to see where this goes. This sucks. Can we listen to "Wake Up" by Arcade Fire? Ooh, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, no, you're telling me this isn't complete trash. I'm saying there's something worth listening to out of this. Like, I think that they're doing something creative, and I'm able to pull something out of it. I'm okay with that. Next song, Nice to Meet You. Now, uh, are these songs singles, Nice to Meet You and Eyes Closed? Were they, like, released? Yes. All right, Nice to Meet You. Let's see where it goes. Espresso? <laughs> You know, once again, I like the fact that sonically it's doing some things that are kind of fascinating and uh, overall actually blend in a way that's new and interesting. Now, I don't think everything was perfect. I think some of the sub bass right. was kind of like clashing a bit strange in the in the hook. And um, in general, I didn't really love the writing just because I feel like people are complaining that's too straightforward. I honestly think that it's a bit confusing with like where it's trying to go with the messaging. It is like mm. a summer jam, but it feels like I can't tell whether or not he's like trying to say you're one of the bros and she's like in the way or he's saying like, oh, like this, or it's like supposed to be, oh, our success. So this person's like a doubter. And it, it does feel like the messaging could be a lot more clear, but uh, overall, I still feel like it's sort of a fun, bouncy summer jam that again is got enough style. To it so i'm okay with yeah. this i i wasn't the biggest into the verses but i don't know i like the it's nice to meet you like that chorus yeah. is cool i think it kind of won me over by the end with those like gang vocals and uh those weird sort of like drum fills in the bridge um or like i don't know i like and i guess the tom's diner type in vocal thing like i don't mm. know i i actually thought it was kind of cool um but uh there there are other tracks on this album where like they use like the sort of like pitch shifting or whatever on like a vocal lick and it doesn't go over as well this is like i think one of the stronger examples of of that yeah so i'd say uh for these first two songs to give ratings to them uh, i'd give probably uh the first one a shrug for again being an interesting enough uh blend of sounds that was nice enough to the ears still th some things that i think could be ironed out but overall good experience and i'd say the same exact thing with nice to meet you where it actually has some moments where i'm like oh that's really clever like again like you're saying that kind of like that verse or the chorus i mean where it's like nice to meet you it's like that kind of subdued presentation of that is actually pretty cool and you know yeah. works on the ears and you know, it, it's something about, like, also seeing the cover being all warm and the sound is warm. It, it kind of works, okay? It kind of yeah. works. Not bad. And I'm and I'm glad that uh, you're able to kind of see a lot of the same stuff I am with this project so far where it's like, yeah, like, they are being creative, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that doesn't always work, but you still love to see it this far in their career yeah. that they're still willing to do some new stuff. 
Next song is the biggest one on this album in terms of singles. It's called Eyes Closed. So here we go. I could do this with my eyes closed. We the best music. <laughs> from the dead, they say the angels are among us. Among us? I'm on. So it's worth mentioning that Space Ashes sent an album by 303. There was a song on there where it's like, I'm so good at sex, I could do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> and that's like, I can't disassociate from that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this is one of the lines. Always happy endings, even if they don't massage me. That was on the fucking song. Was there any dubstep on that? No, on that I don't album? believe. Uh, on this song in particular, I'm pretty sure there wasn't. But that album was so baffling. The worst. I'll tell you what. If there was dubstep, it was probably one of the better songs. There were slow songs on that album that were, like, so boring. They were, like, bafflingly boring. But I will say, like, I'm not bored by this song. Mm. I, I, I will say there are moments that honestly sound, like, parallel to um, Enemy. And I think that yeah. they are sort of retreading. And I don't really like that they're retreading. Uh, but it does eventually just go so off, off of that. And I'm like, what the fuck? So, yeah. watch me transform Michael Bay. Exactly. 303. Yeah. It's really well mixed, too. Like... Yeah. Like, that's the thing is, like, I actually feel like the production on this album so far has, like, been good enough to be able to pull off some of the crazier ideas. Yeah. Some of those, like, percussion sort of, like, like, uh, um, in the second verse, that's probably my favorite part of the song, actually, is just those, like, little sort of, like, I don't know if it's, like, some high sub bass or something, but, uh, yeah, I like that. And then, um, uh, Jeremy was saying something that I thought was pretty interesting about how... Um, they say, I can kind of hear enemy, but I don't think that it's like a perfect thing because, um, that's just sort of their aesthetic, but also it's like the sound of this song is kind of darker, uh, they were mentioning. Mm. And I kind of hear that there is something yeah. about it that's sort of nocturnal, you know, which yeah. is like with I, eyes closed kind of works too. So I think the lyrics are also sort of like in that sort of enemy headspace, like I'm a badass or whatever. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. But, I mean, it's the thing is, like, even though it is, like, it kind of feels like old men kind of like, yeah, look at me. I'm so cool. I can't help but want them to feel cool, you know? Yeah. It's it's kind of a beautiful thing. It's definitely not the worst song uh, I've heard, but it's another song meant for action movie trailers. I will say there's definitely that kind of feel to it, but I would also argue that the momentum of like, bu, 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 and you know, that kind of like slow march um, can honestly work outside of that. And I also think that blending electronics and other things allows it to stand out from that, or at least bring yeah. in the new wave. Like 2025 is rolling around the corner, you know, new Mazdas, oh, wow. new trucks. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's a new, yeah. it's a new age. It's a new generation. Maybe we need some updated truck music. Yeah, what do you think of Eyes Closed uh, in totality? Um, there are there are things I like about the song. Um, and I actually do like the pitch shifted. I was driving in my car, throwing up my hands. Uh, and uh, the you know Eyes Closed refrain. Um, I actually don't mind the dubstep wubs, even though it like sounds like something from like the Second Law by Muse, but maybe like a little bit more listenable. Um, I, I do actually, um, I mean, even though I like the pitch shifted vocals, like the fifth time you hear this in Dunkin' Donuts, you're probably <laughs> going to get a little bit upset. Yeah. Like I could see like overplay, like destroying this song for me. I completely agree because of specifically, I actually don't enjoy the pitch uh, shifted vocals. I just think that that was one of those moments where it sounds like a bit too artificial. Like, where yeah. it is, like, this sort of confident banger, and I think they were doing just fine with, like, these additional pieces, uh, you know, in the instrumental. Like, like I do I do actually like the dubstep elements. 
Um, but yeah. then I feel like as soon as you start like messing with the vocals and like the one thing about it that's pretty natural or at least supposed to feel natural, then it kind of hurts the swagger of the track. Um, yeah. But I overall, even with my issues with this, uh, would still give it a shrug as I think that, once again, it's a song with uh, a fun attitude and honestly enough about it that I can praise, that I could leave it feeling like, yeah, I, I can see what they were going for with that. <laughs> Next song, Take Me to the Beach. Take Me to the Beach. All right. Gonna spend my days telling them to can it. Man, it's like, despite all the crazy bullshit this song is throwing at me, I have to respect that at the core of it, this... It's just so remarkably catchy. It, it yeah. really feels like you could just fuck up and do anything over it, and I'm still going to be grooving to it, because that melody is powerful. Yeah. All right? So... I got I got issues with this song, but you've seen me. I've been moving the whole time to it. Yeah, but same. It's <laughs> that, so. that hook though. <laughs> oh yeah, it's and the, the vocals are so loud on it too. Yeah, like they're so like ah, take the beach. <laughs> So my biggest argument with uh, this song is that I feel like the environment that it's kind of placing me in this beach um, kind of feels fake. I'd even say it's kind of mm. like a plastic beach. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there, I, speaking of gorillas, well, there's a song later on that sounds much more like gorillas than this. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, the thing yeah. about this is, like, this is one of those songs that, even though it has a groove, I think, like, if I played this in the car, it would be awkward. I feel like there would be something about this song that just doesn't really capture that smooth feeling of the beach. It kind of feels more like an aggressive, you take the mountains, yeah. I'll take the beach. And I think that kind yeah. of hurts the song overall and makes it not really function in the way that it wants to. And for that reason, I feel like this is the first song on the album that I think is actually just a failure at what it attempts to do. And for that reason, it's a red headphones, but I still again oh. think that at the core of it, there's something catchy to it. I don't think it's yeah. completely awful. I just think that this is one of those that's maybe just a bit too aggressive on the messaging. Do you think anyone's ever going to, like, bring their boombox out to the beach and, like, play that at full volume? No. I, I went to Venice <laughs> Beach, um, a, like, maybe, like, four days ago and whatnot. And, like, I, so I was trying to, like, reflect my experience there with this song. And it is so chill when you're actually there that a song like this is like this loud party where anyone who's not involved in it kind of feels like they're looking awkwardly over. Right. And that's kind of how this feels. It kind of feels like a party I almost feel bad being a part of. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The song feels like right. two people arguing in a truck with a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Next song, In Your Corner. I don't want to see your name so i just thought about this um i'm not crazy about how this song is going so far but i feel like up to this point at least like how i said i was looking and hoping for that sort of magic to be captured i think they've actually you know through the inspiration of like summer and the beach have actually found um a, like like something to shoot for in terms of where they want that magical feeling to be and that is sort of you know relaxed tropical and you know what they've kind of still managed to throw in their own style and sounds into that and i actually am uh, getting a lot more out of this album than i thought i would so yeah um, even though i, I think the drum yeah yeah oh i was just oh, gonna uh, say drum <laughs> i was gonna say um even though this song is like the first moment where i'm not feeling as much but yeah yeah I think the drums kind of remind me of uh, Umbrella by Rihanna a little bit. You're cooking. Yeah. You're right. Like the boom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Sometimes we shine together.
in life. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. <laughs> Lottie said something that I actually really liked, and it was that uh, it kind of feels like a regression in Origins rather than expanding on their sound like the last few songs, uh, which I think is a good way of putting it, because I think this is the first song that's like heavily fallen into the background for me. Um, even though I think that it yeah. actually still like works in that space, um, it just didn't really reward an active listen like the other ones did, I feel like. Mm. I like the strings at the end, and I, I actually don't really think it's, like, I don't really associate it with Origins, really. um, or Because, like, the ballads on Origins, the production was, like, 20 times worse. And, the, and there was always something more obnoxious in, like, each of those songs that, like, there, there's some baffling shit on Origins. I didn't, yeah. This didn't really <laughs> baffle me. I feel like people forget just how baffling, too, some of the moments on there are, because there's some really crazy shit on Origins. Even, like, Evolve, there's, like, I mean, people were bringing up the thunder, but, like, thunder, like, sounds, like, 20 times more aggressively, like, obnoxious. Yeah. And, I, I mean, you, we can't analyze this song in a vacuum, but, you know, I, I do think it's much more, I think it's pretty listenable. I feel the same way where even though I didn't get much out of it uh, in comparison to like many of the, uh, you know, like Evolve and uh, Origins, um, like you said, the production is so much better uh, that it's like, like you're actually allowed to just have this as background noise at the least. And for that reason, it's a shrug for me. A low shrug. I do enjoy the other songs, most of them more than this one in particular, but I think that it's not offensive uh, enough to really nitpick at so it's just sort of like if you're able to listen to it and have it fall in the background then yeah it kind of still continues the vibe of the album gods don't pray next song no turning back you know i seen too much my venom hey hey bro that's what i was saying in 2024 we need to bring back white boy reggae i've been saying yeah. this. okay it's over <laughs> You know, I do want to mention this. Someone says, oh, God, another song about the haters. I do actually wish that, like, that, like, I agree that, like, there are a lot of songs that kind of address this when I feel like moving on and trying to, like, work on the art and the vision a little bit more, I think would actually just make it more, like, like, would just make it more immersive, you know? Yeah. Plunder? Yeah, this one, it's like the exact opposite of the previous song, where the yeah. other one was not grabbing my attention enough. I think this one grabs my attention almost too much, um, <laughs> especially since it is a we don't care about the haters anthem, when I feel like if they really didn't care, they wouldn't need to address that they didn't care about the haters. Yeah. And that's my biggest issue with this song, because I actually think that the sounds here are really fun, and I think they're just yeah. so over the top. And it does. It feels like offensive, them even attempting reggae. But it's here. It's in the world. And, and it's our job to listen to it and think about how it makes us feel. And god damn, you hear that bass, William. Yeah. That bass was so, like, e. And then, like, the, the, the vocals, like, the production is so many steps up here. I can't be mad. Yeah. I love the instrumental. I do also like how like the third chorus just sort of comes in like a little bit ahead of where you would think it would. Um, like, you know, they do have sort of like a standard verse chorus, verse chorus, bridge chorus type of thing going on for a lot of their songs, but they do sort of like tweak that sort of formula here or there. So maybe they'll have a chorus that comes in earlier than expected or something like that now and then. Yeah. Um, I don't know, the instrumental, I, I liked it too much to say that this was, you know, bad. Same. It's a shrug for me. It's the it's, That's fair. I can't help it, man. Like, the sound is so good. Like, yeah. it really is catchy as all hell, man. Like, mm. what can I say? It's like, I can't expect... Like you're saying, like, sure, it follows a very strong formula, but 
honestly, when you're doing as many blends and as many ridiculous things as they are, it's actually really nice to have a baseline formula right. to allow it to just be rooted in reality and familiarity uh, for the yeah. listener. So I actually appreciate the formula for everything. Not hating an Imagine Dragons album. Who are you and what did you do with Brad? It's <laughs> It's a long story, but I'm actually feeling happy in life. Which, Hell yeah. So, like, actually, you know? So I hear some shit like this, and I'm like, like, they're just doing their thing, you know? I, I can't be too mad. They, they're just like, yeah, we're cool. Look at us. You know, and sure, maybe it's a little flaunty and unnecessary, but I'm still like, okay, I see you. This is music for chads like us. Exactly. Those with chins that are like, <laughs> enough uh, screwing around. Next song, Don't Forget Me. Jay Kevin, we the best! Get you, but can't find the way me. Just get it, jump on. Got lost in the light. So I wrote you one last song. Am I crazy or are Dan's vocals also just better on this album? Yeah. Like, it feels like he's tried to improve. Like, like there's been very few moments where I've been like, he's not doing what he's supposed to. They are better. Like, they sound better. So, yeah. yeah. Dude, I'm going to say it. That was a pretty good song. Yeah. I'm actually going to give it a very... It's like a shrug plus slice smiley ball. Um, yeah. I think in terms of the production, it was wonderful. The vocals actually had some moments where it actually like really punched and you could actually really feel his emotion, you know? Yeah. Like even if it is sort of bare bones and stripped back what he's saying, the fact that you can feel how he feels through this just makes it mm. mean something. And I like yeah. that. So not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. Those pianos, like the oh, da, 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 great. at the end too, like they're layered so nicely. Yeah, it's, like, it's a really yeah. well constructed, simple but effective track. Right. Okay. I see you, William. <laughs> I see you. That was that was not bad. We got two songs left. All right, and yeah. it's been a pretty good album so far. I wouldn't say I love it, but it's been like considering I was not a fan of the last two, a really pleasant surprise. So. Oh, yeah. Next song is called Kid. It's probably like, hey, kid, I heard, saw you were talking about me on Twitter. Is this a song people are saying sounds like Gorillaz? This sounds like yeah. Demon Days like and debut yep. Gorillaz. So. We're gonna play one song, one song only. I think it's one of the weaker songs here, but I also think that the fact that it's so different stylistically and honestly really well produced uh, allows me yeah. to groove to it, uh, despite, again, just not really loving a lot of individual pieces here. I don't really care for the lyrics, and again, mm. it is sort of reminiscent of something I've heard before, but and yeah. it's different enough, and it kind of fits... Even though it's so different, like you're saying, because the production is so solid, they like these songs actually complement each other in a way. So, yeah. Um, for that reason, it's a light shrug for me still. So, yeah. Mm. I think the, um, I mean, I think aesthetically it does like kind of fit like production wise with the rest of the songs. Um, and I, I mean, I guess. I mean, them saying trousers doesn't really help the gorillas case, but you know, I do, I do actually hear some like Imagine Dragons songwriting in this, even though you know, yeah, I mean, the gorillas connection's pretty undeniable. Yeah. So, um, cool. Uh, that was a uh, kid. This is the final song on this album. It's called "Fire in the Eyes of the Monkey" or whatever. All right, here we go. <laughs> From the monkey's yeah. head. I don't think that I'm strong enough. I'm never enough. Never enough. Money in the bank. Money in the bank. 
Um, fire in these hills. Uh, I will say that I don't love it as much as some other people do, just because I think that um, it actually has some of the weaker vocals out of this album. Um, but I also feel like that saxophone and the bass and even that drum machine when when it was clicking, I really fell yeah. into it, and it was nice. Like there there was some moments where just the layering and piece after piece, it it kind of created yeah. some magic, and I was like there for it, and I was feeling it. Uh, but but again, yeah. I I do feel like in general, uh, the vocals aren't great, but I I yeah. still enjoyed it overall. So I'd I'd give it a shrug. It won me over by the end, but the strong <laughs> enough at the beginning is a little a little butt rocky. <laughs> butt rocky. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. I like it. I think there was actually a payoff and sort of progression to the song that made it all worth it so that is loom by imagine dragons a, a nine track project 28 minutes doesn't overstay its welcome um somebody said that they spent two years on this album and honestly i can kind of see that um even though it's only nine songs uh, they really don't hit you with a ton of filler um i feel like one thing about mercury is like they kind of thought pretty much every idea was good enough for an album mm. so that's why there was like two full albums of ideas and uh, for me, it didn't feel like they didn't spend as much time on individual tracks there as they clearly did with these. The production right. is so many steps up. The singing is better. I, I just feel like what we got with Loom is honestly pretty universally enjoyable from a band that I feel like is infamous for kind of not being that. Um, yeah. And I don't think that they had to sacrifice what makes them unique in order to achieve that. I think they just stepped up their game enough for me to say... I, I think this is a resurgence. I, I think that this is honestly a decent enough return. Um, not something that I think I'm going to be returning to or that I think is overall uh, uh, like the most impressive thing they could have come out with. But I really think for Imagine Dragons, um, this is a real genuine big step in the right direction. Uh, for me, I'd give the album a 5 out of 10. Cool. All right. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, it's nine tracks. I'd say, I'd say I pretty much, there wasn't like an outright, like awful track on here. Like, Take Me to the Beach, definitely pushing it a little bit, but I don't know. Like, I compare that to like, you know, stuff on Origins and, you know, there's some songs on Evolve that like, what is it, like Yesterday? That song, I confounds me to this day i do not understand it um yeah i mean i think the production being very consistent from track to track is super important um like i feel like there are a lot of rock bands that you know will have like one or two producers or you know like the same few producers for every track on a lot of albums and Imagine Dragons, like, I don't know, Night Visions, like, they have, like, f you know, a ton of teams of producers and stuff. And, uh, you know, Evolve and Origins are kind of a similar case. Um, but I don't know. It seems like they really just made something sonically cohesive. And I think, uh, you know, I, like, I don't know. I think I'm pretty happy with, um, you know just how sort of low BS this album is. So um, with hearing all their other projects and this one, how would you say this one ranks amongst uh, their other stuff? Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'd rank it over smoke and mirrors. I think it's more consistently enjoyable than night visions though. Like, I don't know. There's a few tracks on night visions that I think, uh would like if they were in the mix here would be the weakest tracks on the album yeah i mean i'd probably give it like a six or seven or so fair enough uh, imagine yeah. dragons are back ladies and gentlemen anyone who's uh, interested in buying imagine dragons token okay now is the time all right to the moon um for me honestly yeah i i don't even really remember the earlier stuff but i will say this probably my favorite that I, I just said like my favorite I've heard from them in a while. Like, I just like mm -hmm. that they're making very consistent projects. 
And I think that it actually works well for them, especially since they are all about experience with their projects, just making right. ex album experiences. So even though Loom, I feel like, has been receiving a very negative reception, um, I think it's worth looking past some of the quirky moments and trying to see, you know, where they're coming from with it, or at least how, what they're trying to attempt with this project, because I do think that there is um, a bigger picture here and just sort of a, a bigger sense of beauty um, that I yeah. think a lot of people are willing to give it credit for. So, yeah. All right. Well, um, William, I wanted to thank you again for being a part of this, and uh, we will definitely be doing more stuff in the future because... Hell yeah. I feel like uh, this this was awesome. Like, it, it was great having you here to talk about this. And, you know, again, like, I'm curious to see if you ever do anything with any of the songs on this album as well. You know, <laughs> if you gather any inspiration from it. Uh, Chet, everyone say goodbye to William. Bye. Take care. <laughs> Bye. A pleasure. Yes, thank you. Uh, we will keep in contact uh, after all this, all right? Hell yeah. All right, peace. Really awesome to have William back. It's been years since William did something with the channel. Um, I could even probably find when we did our call. It was August of 2021. All right, that was, oh my God. So it, what, it's been like almost three full years? Right, and by William Coyne, that's true, here. By William Coyne.